Summary of Sweat by Lynn Nottage Jason, a guy with white racist tattoos on his face, meets with Evan, his African-American parole officer, in September 2008. When Evan asks Jason simple questions about where he lives and what he does for a job, Jason doesn't want to answer. Their tense interactions lead to a fight in which Jason swears at Evan. Jason finally breaks down and says that he just recently ran into Chris. While he was in jail, Jason tried to forget about Chris. The scene changes to Evan's parole meeting with Chris, a black man who has been fighting to fit back into society since he got out of jail because he feels bad about being a criminal and is full of regret for what he did. He tells Evan that he just saw Jason and that the two of them hugged on the street, even though they were both very angry and Jason had some offensive tattoos. In January 2000, the play jumps ahead. It's Tracy's birthday at a bar in Reading, Pennsylvania. Jason's mother, Cynthia, Chris's mother, and their friend Jesse are all there. While Tracy and Cynthia dance, a drunk Jesse passes out at a table. It's clear that they are close with each other and with Stan, the waiter, because they play with him. Christine tells Tracy and Stan that she just kicked out her ex-husband Brucey again because he's been using drugs since he lost his job at a nearby textile mill. They also talk about Freddie Brunner, a friend who burned down his own house not long ago. He may have done it because of the stress of his failed marriage, his debt, and reports that Tracy, Cynthia, and Jesse would lose their jobs at Olstead Steel Tubing. Cynthia and Tracy laugh off the reports, but Stan is sure that NAFTA makes it possible for steel workers' jobs to be sent to Mexico. Jesse wakes up during this discussion and gets angry when Stan doesn't give her another drink. Oscar, the Colombian-American busboy who is often overlooked, takes her to the bathroom. Cynthia and Tracy are afraid that Jesse's drinking could get her fired. Along with recent changes at Olsteads, the two women talk about a job opening for a warehouse supervisor. To Tracy's surprise, Cynthia is thinking about applying for the job. Stan doesn't trust the plant's management because he and his family have worked there for generations and he himself lost part of his leg on the job. Still, Cynthia and Tracy are both set on applying. Both of them have worked in warehouses for more than 20 years. During the month of February, Jason, Chris, Stan, and Oscar are all at the same bar, having a fun chat about the motorcycle Jason wants to buy and Chris's new lady. Then Chris tells Jason that he got into Albright College's teaching program. This surprises Jason because they both work on the floor at Olsteads and Jason always thought they would retire and start a business together. Chris shouldn't have told Jason until now, he's hurt. Jason is sure that Chris can't leave Olsteads because they're meant to work together. Chris, on the other hand, is determined to go his own way. He has to. The next month, Brucey goes to the bar and tells Stan about the lockout at his textile mill that has been going on for almost two years. When it comes to their retirement perks, Brucey and the other workers won't give in. At the moment, the company is hiring contract workers from Mexico. For 28 years, Stan worked at Olsteads and feels bad for Brucey. He's glad that his accident got him out of there. Brucey says he's lost and talks about a racist event that happened to him recently at the labor union. After that, Cynthia, Tracy, and Jesse walk in. Brucey starts to bother Cynthia until she agrees to talk to him. Cynthia doesn't believe him when he says that he's in a rehab program. Cynthia tells Brucey about Chris's news about Albright, and Brucey doesn't like how much tuition costs or that Chris is leaving Olsteads. Brucey begs Cynthia for another chance, but Cynthia stays strong with the help of Tracy and Jesse. Cindy was promoted to warehouse supervisor in April, and she and her friends go to the bar to party. Oscar comes out to ask her about working at Olsteads because he just saw a job posting at the Latino Community Center. Tracy goes outside to smoke a cigarette. Tracy doesn't understand this because she's sure they're not hiring. To get a job at the plant, Oscar would also need to be a member of the union and know someone there. Tracy changes the subject and tells Oscar that Cynthia only got the raise because she is black. She then makes a joke about how Ladinx people like Oscar come to reading to find work, 
but Oscar replies that he was born in Berks County too. Tracy, on the other hand, is sure that the town was built by German refugees like her grandparents. She tells him, Olsteds isn't for you. After a few weeks, Jesse waits at the bar by herself because Tracy, Cynthia, Jason, and Chris are all late to her birthday party. After a while, everyone except Tracy shows up, and Cynthia and Jesse talk about their early days at the plant. Tracy walks in right as Jesse is opening up about her unfulfilled hopes to travel the world as a young woman. Things get heated when Tracy and Cynthia get into a fight. It's clear that Tracy doesn't like Cynthia getting the raise over her. She doesn't like how Cynthia seems to be avoiding her and putting on a show for management. Cynthia gets it, but she tells Tracy not to bring up race, and she says she'll let everyone know if she hears anything about the rumors of cuts. Chris, Jason, and Brucey meet at a bar on July 4th. They tell Brucey that Olstead moved three mills out of the plant over the Christmas break. The business has now put up a list of names on the front door, and Chris and Jason can't wait to see it for themselves. Brucey warns them that without machines, there will be no work. He feels like they're about to go through the same thing he did. To keep a lockout from happening, he tells them to take any deals that are made available. James and Chris run to Olsteads right away. The story jumps ahead to October 2008, a few weeks after Jason and Chris's release talks. Jason has come to beg Tracy for money, but she doesn't want to talk to him or help him. Jason is terrified to find out that Tracy is high. It looks like she became hooked on painkillers while Jason was in jail. While this is going on, Chris goes to Cynthia's place to stay the night. Cynthia, who lost her home and now works odd hours at repair jobs, says she's sorry to Chris, but Chris doesn't think she has anything to apologize for. She tells him that she and Tracy don't talk anymore because of what happened. Chris tells Cynthia that Jason is also out, and Cynthia gets angry because she thinks Jason is the one who got Chris in trouble. She still doesn't get it, so she asks Chris to explain. In a flash, the play goes back to July 2000. Stan and Oscar watch in the bar as Tracy, Chris, Jason, and Jesse yell at Cynthia to tell them what's going on. Cynthia begs everyone to calm down, but she finally tells them that Olsteads is going to renegotiate the floor workers' contracts. To save jobs, 60% of their pay will be cut, and perks will be given up. She says that running the U.S. plant is now too expensive, and NAFTA makes it easy for Olsteads to hire workers in Mexico. People like Tracy are furious. In a month, Olsted's workers have turned down the deal that was made, and the lockout will continue. Cindy spends her birthday by herself at the bar, where she tells Stan how upset and sorry she is for locking her friends and son out of the plant. Someone named Cynthia is yelled at by Tracy and Jesse when they show up. But Cynthia is sure that she can't miss the chance she's been given. Tracy and Jesse don't know what it's like to be in her place. In September, Jason and Chris run into Brucey at the bar. It's clear that Brucey is high, and Chris talks about how Brucey leading other men in a walkout at the mill when he was a kid inspires him to stay strong and keep fighting. Brucey, on the other hand, tells him it's useless and that Chris should instead follow his dreams and go to school. The next month, Oscar tells Stan that he's taken on some casual work at Olsteads because the pay is so good. But Stan tells him that this will make the locked-out floor workers angry. But Oscar doesn't care, everyone in reading likes him, so he doesn't feel loyal to them. Oscar is in the back of the bar when Tracy walks in. She tells Stan how lost and ashamed she feels not having a job. She calls Oscar racist names and gets ready to lunge at him when he comes back, but Stan stops her. Oscar tells Tracy that working at Olsteads isn't about him, but Tracy says it is. When Chris, Jason, and other union members protest on the line a week later, they get into a fight with the Ladinx temporary workers at Olsteads. After, they go to the bar, where Jesse is once again passed out at a table and are very excited to tell Stan about it. However, Stan is not pleased. He believes that Jason and Chris should leave reading and go somewhere else. Chris agrees, he doesn't want to become Brock. 
Oscar walks into the bar to get his things from the back and say goodbye to Stan while they talk. Just then, Tracy comes out of the bathroom. Tracy, Jesse, and Jason call Oscar racist names and make rude comments. Jason then stands up and makes a threat. Stan hits the bar with a baseball bat and tells Jason to sit down. But Jason stops Oscar from leaving and starts beating him. Stan and Chris try to stop the fight, but Tracy and Jesse make it worse. Chris gets mad at some point too, and he joins Jason in beating Oscar. Jason grabs the bat and hits Oscar in the gut. As he swings back to hit Oscar again, he hits Stan in the head by mistake. Stan trips and hits his head on the bar. He is badly hurt and bleeding on the ground. The play goes back to October 2008, when Jason and Chris had their own release meetings with Evan. He tells both guys to stop feeling bad about themselves and to talk to each other. Another few days pass, and Chris goes to the bar. Oscar is now the boss there. Jason also shows up, which scares Oscar at first. Jason gets scared and turns to leave, but Stan comes in to clean the tables, stopping him. Stan has a serious brain injury that makes it very hard for him to hear or talk. Bruce says that Oscar is being nice by taking care of him, and Bruce says that this is how things should be. It's clear that Chris and Jason are sorry, but they still can't say what they're thinking. The four guys are standing awkwardly, waiting for the next moment. They are together but not together. About the author. Elizabeth Lynn Nottage was born in Brooklyn in 1964. She wrote her first full-length play, The Darker Side of Verona, while she was at Fiorella H. LaGuardia High School, which focuses on the visual and acting arts. On to get her bachelor's degree from Brown University and then her master's degree from the Yale School of Drama in 1989. Nottage then worked in the press office for Amnesty International and wrote several plays, including Intimate Apparel, Ruined, By the Way, Meet Vera Stark, and Sweat. In 2011, she got her DFA from Brown. Juilliard and Albright College have also given her honorary degrees. Tony Gerber and Nottage have two children together. They are married and formed the production company Market Road Films together. For Ruined and Sweat, Nottage got the Pulitzer Prize. She is the first and only woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for drama twice. She has also won a Guggenheim Grant, a Merit and Literature Award from the Academy of Arts and Letters, and a MacArthur Genius Grant Fellowship, among other medals and grants. Nottage is a professor of writing plays at Columbia University. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.